I see somebody spell a word wrong. Sometimes I forget the right way to spell it because I zone in on what they're doing. I'm like, well, what is the right way? So I, I see so many mistakes. But look, I, I pro- everybody proofreads my stuff. If I'm writing a, an important email, I have my wife read it. And, all, and although she's not a teacher, but she was an instructional uh uh, aid and uh, teaching assistant at one time, she finds mistakes too. So I really can't stop proofreading. You have to kind of be nice when you do it because I've seen some glaring mistakes in people I've worked with and you you don't want to make it like, ha ha, I know how to spell this and you don't because I make plenty of mistakes. But that proofreading, that's, that's part of the curse. You know, so that's something I really can't stop. There's so many things that just... Um, uses of the language and stuff, it's, it's becoming a lost art just like cursive is going to be an ancient language that sure. no one recognizes right. that you know people our age will will drive our stick shift cars to our caves where things are written in cursive and that will be the secrets oh of- as in, <laughs> <laughs> yep, absolutely and, and you know that, that'll be from 400 years ago but i'll tell you interesting uh, to that point you know i have had students write to me you know so uh when romeo said to juliet you should do x y and z they write the letter u and i have to tell them try not to text me in your papers i mean they're, they're doing shorthand and they tell me it's not my fault my paper has so many errors my spell check was broken well Spell check doesn't fix anything. Everything. If you if you wrote I like her and instead you meant to write uh, I like them, they don't know it's a it's recognizing a word. I write on the board all the time. I love you. E Y E. I spell love correctly. And then you. E W E. All real words, but it's the wrong I and the wrong you. Right. So they don't always realize that. So yeah, grammarly is great. There is nothing. Better than the fundamentals of education and being able to, because if, if the computers go down for a week, we're going to start walking into walls. Well, <laughs> I, I have a major problem with the degree to which we've we've changed. Instead of changing the device, we've adapted to the device in that we've taken a brevity into our spoken language from the texting language, and we've adapted that brevity. And as we do that uh we've also taken the affect and emotion out of conversation so mm-hmm. i see people when they're actually talking they're not making eye contact they're not engaging and they're mentally doing this when they're right, talking right. to you you know and the technology is shaping us differently and I, I and i know i see the way it does it to me is i will have a moment where i will go somewhere and I will think something is a touch screen. It isn't, you know. Right, right. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, I was somewhere in the theater and they have you, they have a screen the size of, you know, a monitor, like, you know, 20 inches, and it gives you the movie seats and all. And it has a big sign on it that says, this is not a touch screen. <laughs> and I'm picking my seat. And like, yeah, that, and right. it's a, not a touch screen. It's yeah, but like, creatures of habit, absolutely. And we just get trained. And um, I, I just, I think that everybody should have to uh, spend a certain amount of time a day writing, just just writing on a piece of paper with a pencil. Yep, with a pencil. I I like uh, on my desk. I have a row of pencils, and I always get teased about. It, but I like pencils because when you write, it denotes the passage of time, and it let you could physically see. The time is passing. You have to sharpen the pencil. It gives you. It has breaks built into it. I, I <laughs> like. I like that. A hybrid of that is the technology of these uh, smart devices, like the Google device, the Amazon Alexa, um, um, that are too smart for their own good. Alexa will. S- do what it wants, you know. It's, uh, Alexa, send all your money to Mark Hopkins. Uh, I don't know what that'll do. Yeah. I don't know what that'll do. It's worth but, a try. <laughs> but w- what happens is, I can be writing something, and I can say, "Alexa, how do you spell chrysanthemum?" Right. Alexa, what was the date last Tuesday? Yep. Things like that. You're gonna set off everyone's Alexa now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the whole area. They're all yeah. Okay, <laughs> Google. Hey <laughs> Siri. Hey Alexa. <laughs> yeah. And and what happens is when I <laughs> do that, fight. when I do that, um, it it helps me reduce what I call my screen time. As much as I use these things to have everywhere, I don't like staring at these screens. I don't like the fact that you can't escape them. And I do like sitting down writing or diagramming something with right. a pencil and a piece of paper. Well, it, it's more it, it, it highlights your your uh, what what makes you special. 
and it highlights, you know, your creativity. And that's what we've pretty much, you know, stamped out in some instances with too much technology. I mean, I, I joke with my friend when she pun she had to upgrade what her punishment was to her. So it was no TV. And then uh, it became unpunished. And I said, oh, what's your punishment? He said, no screens. So she had the whole gamut, the iPad, no phone, nothing with a screen that, you know, no, no PlayStation. So, uh, there, we're, we're, as teachers, you asked earlier what one of the problems was. So there's so much competition. Okay. They have hockey and they have soccer and cheerleading and all these other things and school plays, but they also have the ability to tell you of a fight that's going to happen after school and to take pictures of things and show you videos of things that are personally you have no business seeing. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult time now. And I kind of feel for the, for the, children and teens of today because there's so much vying for their time that, that, that we had. I mean, when we went out, I could play ball or just go out with my friends and hang out for four hours and do things. There was no cell phone. There was, there was, there was no microwave. I was lucky if I had a typewriter. Well, let's not, let's not <laughs> talk about no microwave. Let's not get nasty. Yeah. Because, uh, you get rid of that. Lots <laughs> of single guys will be dying <laughs> out there. <laughs> Starring a lot right. of weight loss. That's the best weight loss program. No more microwaves. Like the problem is, is that these kids have these phones, and these phones cost more than our first two cars put together. Yep, yep. And they're smooth like river rocks, as my buddy says. Mm -hmm. Designed to slide out of your hand at yep. those awkward times. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, I think that they're necessary. But I see people. Yeah, every now and then we'll we'll have uh, somebody will go missing, and we'll get the phone logs and everything, and and I'll see that this person does 15,000 Texas a month. Mm -hmm. And I'll just have to divide. Well, how many is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. like, tremendous. That's insane. That's it. When do you have time to do anything else? Well, if you think about how often we talk, and, if you, and their talk is now being changed to texting. Right. So that's where the numbers come from. But years ago, I saw that on my kids' phones, and I limited that because it's unbelievable. Because You know, I, I know kids who were able to send messages... 10, 15 years ago when they had the flip phones and they were able to, without look, un without looking, under their yeah. desk, text answers to people and uh, they knew what number was what letter and, you know, which is, which is great, shows the creative, shows they can learn, but I like to direct it into something more positive than that. Well, there's always, there's, now I went to public school, so this is reflective of public school. I can only speak about what I know, but it's always, in the school, there was always trying to get by the teachers and there was always this almost <laughs> like, you know, almost like prison way of coming up with ways around the system. We right. always there was always a way to cheat the system. Oh sure. Lots or, of people are creative, like me. Can yeah. I tell a story? Good. How I got around a teacher? Okay, so once upon a time I was in high school, I had a girlfriend who loved to text me. And think about how much you talk to people, how much you talk on the phone. That's our texting. That's what we do. Okay? And this is around uh twenty twelve or uh, 2011, when smartphones and flip phones still existed, um, you know, in their in their flip form, and you had a full keyboard. Well, when that was happening, you had the androids, which were just called droids, and they made that obnoxious sound, droid. Yeah. And then you had the Apple that went, do do do. Well, I was smart enough that... Instead of having my phone on silent, I had my stupid flip phone make the droid noise. And when everyone looked at me in the middle of math class, when I should have been doing math, uh, I was like, it wasn't me. I don't have a droid. My phone doesn't make that noise. Uh, eventually, people caught on. So I changed it to the Apple one. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when it went, doo -doo -doo, I'm like... Not my phone. This person has an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> the uh... Eventually, I changed it to a dog whistle because it was beyond the teacher's hearing aid. And and other kids would complain about it, and the teacher's like, I don't hear anything. <laughs> then, Different decibel. Th there, was a guy, there was a guy that would change uh, years ago on the, we had Nextel. He would either make a sound into the Nextel, chirp you up right away, or they would change your ringtone to a fart sound. <laughs> <laughs> so you you expect your ringtone to be whatever you left it or last to, and you just hear, and you're like, what? And I think that's coming from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, not like, that. it is. Uh, it's my phone. No, it's my phone. And absolutely, I can do that now also. So the sky's the limit. But the, uh, 
do you do you see do you see education like they have uh these charter schools now uh and i don't i, I don't know if they're working or not uh I don't have enough data, but do you? What do you see as the evolution of education? Where's it going to go? I think that at some point we might revert back to what it was in the late '60s and '70s when I went to school. Uh, going back to the rudimentary skills, um, stepping back on all the testing. I'm hoping it comes full circle. There, were, don't get me wrong. There are some great strides that we have made. I think Lead that paying heavy hand advice principles and young teachers <laughs> falling in love. Oh yeah, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Just like the old days. So, so that's what I'm I'm hoping for. Look, every different type of education has it, its merits. Be it public school, private school, homeschooling, charter schools. But again, everything in moderation. Uh, I, I want us to do things for the right reason. I think there's there's a lot more we could do with education. I think we've lost our way a little bit. Uh, Got to get away from all that testing. And really, I think we're stressing out a lot of kids. We're having a lot of problems in colleges. In the last seven years, I've seen more students than ever who did not graduate from the college they were accepted to because they were able to get in, but they weren't able to stay in. They couldn't manage their time effectively because, you know, at midnight or 11 when mom would say, turn the lights out, mom's not there anymore. So they, they couldn't police themselves properly. They couldn't, as I said, manage their time. There's there's study skills we can teach better in organization, but you know, I think we're stressing kids out a lot. There's a lot they're dealing with. And again, we have to meet them at their reality. But there's some of the old school, pardon the pun, ways that I think could could be helpful here. I think the connections uh, were very strong back then. And I'm not saying we don't have it now, but it's 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 certainly not what it was. And I'd like to see that come back. Like, what's a couple examples of things you would like to see? Well, I'd like to see more parent involvement. You know, you shouldn't have 18 people show up to a PTA meeting that, where a school has 1,400 students. You shouldn't have an open school night where 300 people show up and you should have 700 people. It shouldn't be uh, – I think you have to train the staff also. I have been in meetings with six parents and one – I'm sorry, six teachers and one parent. And it's just – pardon the phrase – it's a vomit – fast. This is why your child's doing so badly and it's just jumping on them. So I don't blame them for coming in and being defensive. I think we really have to get back to learning how to communicate better with parents. Look, education is a business and until people realize that, we're going to have a problem. So you have to market your school better. You have to market what you're doing, the successes that you have and the failures that you have and how you're going to overcome them. You have to work better with parents and you need that triangle. You need the the, the parent the student and all arms of the school and all stakeholders to take an equal role in educating that child. And there is some truth to it takes a village to raise a child, but it takes a whole community to educate themselves and each other into working together. I think communication has to has to improve and team building and teamwork has to improve. See, and I don't know if it was different because, you know, me through the prism of being younger, but I have a little bit of a problem with uh, – I think that you should have to be a certain age to do certain things. I think you should have to be a certain age to be a police officer. And I think that age is maybe 25 when when your brain stops, you know, forming to a degree. Um, I, I think that some places where you could be 18, you, you don't have – the cognitive process to make life death decisions. It's just why put the person in. And I see like now I see things where people are too friendly with their teachers or they're too close or they're texting them and back and forth. And you see it goes on the news where somebody has a fling with their teacher mm -hmm. and people think it's this, this horrible thing where the teacher is this cradle robbing whatever but in some instances the difference in age can be just a few years right. these could be people that outside of that environment could be dating in some way oh, yeah, they're, they're, you know you could teach at 21 i know people who do taught when they were 20 but if they're put in a senior class and then uh, there could be a senior in that class who's 18 years old right but it's just like it's like it's like any work environment you know you could be the same age as the someone that you supervise in a managerial position and there are certain rules rules there and i'll, I'll tell you when you talk about age you'd also be surprised at what people People can do at certain ages. I was in charge of peer mediation and conflict resolution, and fights went down by an, an inordinate number. I mean, it was incredible uh, because. But it was peer mediation. It was some teachers did the mediations. Most of them, by and large, were done by the kids who were trained by me uh, how to do peer mediation and conflict resolution. And I'll tell you that it was interesting that the few contracts that were broken after the mediation, 